One of my favorite things about building mobile applications is seeing them run on my local device that I have in my pocket. Now, one of the complications though, is when you have an entire sort of development setup for your backend APIs that your mobile applications are calling. How do you handle that type of communication where you need your device to talk to your machine? Well, dev tunnels can help out with that, enabling you to tunnel down from your machine to a publicly accessible URL that your mobile applications can communicate with. Available in Visual Studio 2022 and from a developer command line interface, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about dev tunnels to set it up. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, here I am inside of Visual Studio. I have a backend API to get weather and serve it up. And then I have a down in Maui application that's going to call that API and it is going to display the current weather that's coming on. So here is my ASP.NET Core web API and I can see the weather forecast that's going to return a bunch of random weather coming back. If I go into my down in Maui application, it's pretty simple. Here it just calls that local weather forecast and is going to deserialize that JSON and display the first one in the list. So let me just go ahead and run the API first, and you can see the sort of data that's coming back. So again, this is running on localhost, and every time I refresh, we get different data coming in. Perfect, that's great. Now, if I come over into another instance of Visual Studio, I've set the down in Maui as the startup project, and I'm just gonna run it here on Windows. So this is gonna call just locally here, my local machine on HTTPS, and grab the weather. So there we go, perfect. I'm getting the weather every single time I click on it. So now what happens though, when I run this on a local device? So for example, on an Android emulator or on an Android device, or maybe on an iOS device, you know, what's gonna happen then? Because those devices and emulators will need to speak to local hosts and on HTTPS. So let's go ahead and deploy this to my Android emulator and see what happens. Okay, our application is up and running, and I'm just gonna say get weather. And I get an error, Wait, that, that's kind of weird, right? Why am I getting this error? Well, a few things. The first thing is that I'm inside of an emulator. I can't call localhost directly. And additionally, I have HTTPS going on here, which means I need to make sure that my certs and everything are correct and the emulator can talk to you. And that's really problematic for local development. It's actually really complicated to set that up. And for Android emulators, you actually need to talk specifically to an IP that has been set up for that device on a specific port. So it gets really complicated uh, to set this up. And you can read documentation on how to do it to do HTTP clear text traffic or HTTPS, and I'll link to documentation and do it. But ideally, it would be really great to not have to worry about local host and all the certs and just have a public endpoint. I don't want to actually deploy my backend API here. I just want to still run it locally on my machine. Well, how could I get a public URL for it? Well, I can use a dev tunnel. There's two ways to do it. One is directly through Visual Studio 2022, and the other one is through a command line that you can run on any operating system. Well, let's go ahead and set it up first inside of Visual Studio. From the debug menu, I'm going to do the drop down and see Dev Tunnels, and I can say Create a Tunnel. And here I can select an account, I can give it a name, so I'll say Weather Tunnel. I can see if I want it to be temporary or persistent in this case. And I can set the access level. In this case, I'm going to set anonymous public coming in here. I'm just going to hit OK. So now the dev tunnel has been created for me. And now when I run my application, the dev tunnel is going to start up for me automatically. And it's going to tell me that there's a dev tunnel and I want to continue on. Now notice here that if I extend this out, that I have a public URL and I'm still getting back the information. And in fact, if I add a breakpoint into this API, we can note that whenever I refresh this, I am getting that breakpoint, right? It is tunneling to my local machine. So now what this means is I have a full endpoint available to me, and I'm going to go back into my Android application, and I'm now going to post in that URL. And now I'm going to debug it again. Now, in this case, I'm sort of getting around that entire issue of local hosts and certs and all those other things by just saying, please use this tunnel to my local machine. So now here's my application. It's up and running. 
And this time it will use the other URL. So I get weather and I get it back right away. And of course I could go over here and add that breakpoint just to prove that it's actually up and running over here. Hit get weather. It's hitting that API right there on my dev machine, which is super duper cool. Now, what this also means is that I can run it on a physical device. So for example, I could set this on a local iOS device. So here I'm inside of Visual Studio 2022 and I've integrated hot restart over here to deploy this to my iOS physical device that's plugged into my Windows machine. All I gotta do is select my account with my Apple developer account and it will get everything for me automatically, build it up and deploy it. This could be an Android device that's plugged into my Windows machine, or in this case, it is a actual physical iOS device that's here. Now this is gonna compile it up and then deploy this. So let's give it a second here. All right, it's installed the iOS application. Now all of my normal debugging and everything like that is going to work automatically for me. And I'll also get all of the great uh, built-in support in Visual Studio, such as my live visual trees and my XAML live previewer. So here's my application that's running. There we go. I'm going to say get weather, loading, and sure enough, I'm hitting that public endpoint automatically for me here. Now, when I spin down my backend API, that endpoint's not going to work anymore, but I can persist that and it's there automatically. So that's really, really cool. All right, well, what if you're saying, well, I'm not inside of Visual Studio 2022, I'm using VS Code, for example. Well, the cool part here is that the dev tunnel is available as a command line interface. You can get it on Windows, Mac, or Linux, and you can easily install it. I just ran the winget command on my Windows 11 machine, and it automatically installed dev tunnel. So here, now all I need to do is open up a PowerShell, for example, here. I'm gonna go and make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to say dev tunnel user login. So now I'm going to log in to my dev tunnel account. Now, previously I was inside of Visual Studio, so I was kind of good to go. So now I'm logging in here. Perfect. Now there's many, many things that are built in to the dev tunnel CLI. So if I go back to the documentation and look at the command line here, we can see that there's all sorts of different things built in. So being able to log in, host a tunnel, host groups, you can do anonymous, you can do different ports, you can do all sorts of different things. There's all sorts of great things here as well. So let's go ahead and create that same thing. So I'm gonna say dev tunnel here, I'm gonna say host. Now there are a bunch of different parameters and arguments that I can pass in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say port 7169. I'll say protocol, HTTPS. And as you can see, I'm gonna allow anonymous. Perfect. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to host that port and give me a URL that I can communicate with. And again, I can continue on here and then I can say slash weather forecast. And that is tunneling back to my machine automatically. There you have Dev Tunnels, one of my favorite pieces of technology. In fact, I've done additional videos on my YouTube channel talking about the command line interface and also a deeper dive into Visual Studio 2022. So check out those videos. I'll put them below and up over there here as well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, check out the docs, check out the samples, try it for yourself. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up jam that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you get updates every single time we'll put out a video right here on the .net youtube thanks for watching <laughs>